Mama Fossil here. I got my brew. I got my brand new cacti. I thought this one was cute and unique. And I got this little guy because it's different. And I love things that are different. I don't know why the flower is growing out the side. Let's do it out the top. <clears throat> That's pretty cool. And what I had in these didn't last, so I took them out. Got me some rock here. And I'm just going to make a big old mess, basically, is what I'm going to do. Because I don't remember if I put rock in the bottom of these. <clears throat> yeah, I guess I did put a little bit of rock. Now, you notice there's no holes, so it's really good to put rock. Especially. Hmm. Probably about good. And you start filling it back up. I love getting my hands in soil. There's something. Hey, what are you doing? It's my grand doctor. Something really soothing about. Keep doing that and she'll start running and get her energy out. See? If you keep doing that, she'll keep running around and get her energy out. Woo! Go, girl, go! Woohoo! Yeah! You go, girl! <laughs> Where'd she go? Lily? Oh, yeah! Okay, back to what I was doing. So, you put about that much soil in it. I don't know if you can tell with this lighting. And then you get this little puppy and you just start massaging it. Just gently massage it. Don't get all rough with it and manhandle it. Just start massaging all the way down. All the way around. Try not to poke yourself. See all this little prickly things? Yeah. And those are a bitch to get out of your fingers. Start gently massaging it. What it'll do is it'll break it away from the sides. And then, voila. See? And then what I like to do is I like to sit and massage it a little bit. Real gentle. Kind of gets the circulation in the roots going. So I like to massage it a little bit. Yeah. You get to watch a video of a peculiar looking cacti getting a massage. How often can you say that you've done that? Watched a video about a cactus getting a massage. Okay. Gently pick it up and set where you want it. This isn't easy doing it one handed. Oh, geez, still going crazy. <clears throat> and then start, start filling it up. Yeah? I did one day. I'm just so scared of that other that neighbor dog coming around and it only beats a couple minutes. Well and get her out to do it. They'll run and play and get their energy out. And you fill it up. <clears throat> Gently start packing it down. Don't poke your fingers. Anyway, I love putting my hands in dirt and soil. There's something so raw and natural about it. I just love it. Oopsie, I got you a little dirty, didn't I? Yeah. Your plant will be okay. And then you want to pack it down. You don't want a bunch of air pockets. Stop, Lily! Stop it! Little makers are after you and I don't want to hear it. Stop being grumpy. Mm. Play. 
bitches are being grumpy. Excuse me while I spit my chew out. I think I got it on my hair. That's fantastic. That is so ladylike. That is so ladylike. And then you just sit and push it down. Be gentle about it. Try to get some of those air pockets out of it. See how easy that was? Easy peasy. One done. One and done. Oh shit. Those girls, those bitches there. Lily, you being a chump. So I just dumped the dirt out. Voila. Put the rock in. Here, can you take this in for mom? And then you just put a little bit of rock in there. Especially since there's no holes in it. It'll help separate the water from the roots. And you notice this? This is a piece of pottery. This doesn't hurt to be in the dirt. It's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. Because I say so. That's why. Alright. We're almost ready for the massage. The cacti massage. <clears throat> Same thing. Sit and... Oh, sit and... Well, you can lay it down or stand it up. doesn't matter. Just gently massage it. From the bottom all the way up to the top. Squeezing it. Gently. Don't want to damage it. Ow. Some bitch. Ow. Well, somehow, I already got, I don't know if you can see it, but I already got a little piece of cactus in me. Okay. So why don't you gently massage it. Lay it on its side. Oh shit. It's okay. Tap it. <clears throat> and it'll come right out. See? And we're gonna give you a nice gentle massage. And the reason these are falling off is because somebody the soil is really wet on this one. And the thing you gotta remember about succulents, cactus, succulents. You don't want to overwater them. They hold water. So you don't want to put a lot of water. I really should have tweezers or something to do this. Uh, how am I going to make you stand up? I'm going to get poked. Anyway, these little guys. Hmm, where should I plant you? I'll put you guys somewhere else. You'll be a whole nother project. Anyways, you could tell somebody watered this too much. They shouldn't be watered too much because they're succulents. And I like to say, well, succulent they suck the water up they hold water basically they're not like other plants so you don't need a lot of um, water because they hold their own water and it'll start doing root damage and the plant itself will start rotting so that's something for you to stick in your memory and remember like I have a Christmas cactus, it's a cactus, succulent. You don't add, you don't water it very often. Because it 
it sucks the water up. It's a succulent. It holds the water. You do the same thing. Put the dirt in. Use a couple fingers. Tap it down. If this is a bigger area, I'd be using my whole hand to push the dirt down. There we go. Almost got my mess cleaned up. Hope you guys like your new little home. Ooh, we got a beetle in here. It's dead. these little guys somewhere. I'll find a little spot for them or I'll get another pot to put them in. It's time to spit my chill. Ew. Time to take a drink of brew. Mm. And there we go. And then, oh shit, you're alive. Thought you were dead. You were plain dead. You were plain dead. Look at you. You're alive. It's alive. Number five is alive. Number five is alive. Oh. Um. Okay. Bye bye. Number five is alive. So don't worry about making a mess outside. You're outside. It's dirt. It belongs outside. Okay. So I got these little things. I don't really think I'll ever use them again. So let's talk a little bit. Um, I don't know if you could tell my voice. My voice changes a little bit sometimes. And that's one thing I've noticed. With having... Excuse me. I always make messes when I clean my plants up. There's my Christmas cactus. <clears throat> Around November, it likes to get its flowers early. It'll start getting really pretty flowers. Um, if you've seen any of my pictures or videos before, way in the beginning, those are my aloe. That's one of my berry plants peeking up. It's doing amazing. It's about four or five feet tall now. There's my weed eater. Um, yeah, my voice. If you notice, my voice changes a little bit. And that is because <clears throat> of a few different things. I wonder if you can see that spider web. You get spider webs freaking everywhere. It's crazy. Um, I don't know. Exactly what's causing my voice changes. But, um, I have a little snick that lives in there. And then I have my little, um, I have a little lizard I call Lizzie. And I have a toad. He's really big and fat. Um, if you go to my Facebook page, my personal page, and or Hell Yeah American, you can see Phi, as I've named him. It's supposed to be short for amphibian, but anyway. This is one of my berry bushes. Started off that big, and within like a month, got it this big. Raspberries. This is my other one. This one was practically dying, but it's really come out of it. Um, my son and his girl are growing cucumbers and jalapenos and squash, and they're all doing it. Right. But to get mine to come back out and start doing so well, 
I always come up with what they, I refer to my witchy concoction. I use magnesium, um, some Epsom salt, a little bit of iron, a little bit of apple cider vinegar, and I, uh, um, mix it together until it's all the pills have, um, melted so it can mix together in the water. And, um, and then I, uh, I water them with that. Maybe once a month or so. Now I'm going to water with a really soft spray. Just a little bit of water. Not very much. Just until they get used to their home. Clean the table off. It's a really old table, otherwise I probably would not be doing this to the wood. Okay. You guys are, you guys are ready. My apple tree is having a little bit of a rough time, but when it was bought for me, I think it had some disease or something. But it's really trying, really trying hard to come out of it. Put a little bit of water. Anyway, back to my voice. Okay, so when I was in California, I had like four biopsies, maybe four biopsies, neat, fine needle biopsies, and uh, ultrasounds. I've been on levothyroxine, varying degrees of strength from high to low and back down again and it's been quite a ride anyway on my right side it kept coming back um, sus uh, suspicious um, what's the other word they use suspicious um, Oh, God, my brain. Anyway, suspicious. Um, un undetermined, basically, is what they were saying. And uh, I knew a year, maybe two years now, I could feel it in my body. I, I, I can't explain it. There's really no way for me to explain it, but I knew, I knew I had cancer. I knew if I didn't have cancer, I was, something was off kilter in my body. And I've always been pretty good about telling if something's wrong. Like, I just had a hysterectomy, uh, the 27th of June. It's a little over a month ago. And I knew that I had an infection. Went in for my two-week post-op. Asked the doctor to do a um, pap smear. And I said, you know, something's wrong. I, I know I've got an infection. Oh, well, you know, that smell, that, that's normal. You know, your, your body's healing, yada, yada. I'm like, no, something is wrong. She put me on an antibiotic for seven days. Um, yeah, I couldn't drink for seven days. I actually pushed it nine days just to make sure. I sh probably shouldn't even be drinking now. I drink maybe one beer a night. But anyways, um, that's a whole other story. Um, okay, so she put me on the antibiotic within 
like the second or third day, these symptoms I was having, the odor and such, and the discharge, gross, I know, but hey, if you're going to be on my page, you got to, if you're going to subscribe to me, you got to get used to me just blurting things out straight, straight up, you know, um, anyway, so within three days, that started clearing up. By the fourth, fifth day, it was almost completely cleared up. So when doctors tell you stuff, they're doctors. They have a degree. I understand this, and I respect them. I respect their hard work to become doctors. But I have lived with this body for almost 55 years, and I can usually feel when something strange is going on with it, and I just want them to listen, and she did. And I have the utmost respect for her for doing that. So anyway, that got cleared up. Um, I'm still having a little bit of, I can't really call it pain, but um, uh, discomfort. It's all part of healing. It takes anywhere from four to eight weeks to completely heal. And sometimes I do things I probably shouldn't be doing. Because um, I get bored and want to get things done, but... In the beginning, I was very, very careful for the first couple weeks. Well, I swept and stuff, but I try not to bend over. And you're not, oh, if you have a hysterectomy, TMI, but whatever, do not, and you have to have a bowel movement, do not push. If it doesn't come out easily, use a stool softener, eat some oatmeal, drink a bunch of water, drink some apple juice. Um, if you haven't gone after like two or three days, call your doctor, but just eat some oatmeal, eat some roughage and get that going because you're going to have a hard time going after having surgery like that. And it's imperative that you go because that could be a whole bunch of other problems, but you don't want to push. You do not. Your insides are trying to figure out where they're going to stay at and they're readjusting themselves and you don't want to literally push your intestines out so be gentle with your body don't force yourself to urinate don't force yourself to have a bowel movement if you have a fever anything strange odors fevers loss of appetite nausea any of that tell your doctor Anyway, okay, back to my cancer. So I kind of knew for the last year to two years that something was wrong. And uh, like I said, the test kept coming back inconclusive, suspicious. I'm like, okay, why would they all come back like that? Well, I told my doctor in February, December, January, January, February, I think it was, that I was moving to Tennessee, he brought me in, I said, look, are we going to do this surgery and get it done, like you've been talking about, or, because his, he kept telling me, maybe we should do surgery and remove the nodules before it turns into cancer, and I was all for it, I'm like, yeah, let's do it, well, my last visit, he brings me in, and he's like, oh, you're TCH levels are great, um, no changes in um, the biopsies, they're holding the same, basically wrote me off as okay. Well, I come over here, I get a primary physician, I tell her my history on various things, my PTSD, she immediately gets me in with a psychiatrist and psychologist. This woman is amazing. She immediately got me in with an endocrinologist, a gynecologist. They have all so far been above and beyond amazing. My endocrinologist sent me for 10 zillion different kinds of tests. Um, sleep study, which I have breathing problems and obstructions, and that's a whole nother video right there. Anyway, I have to go for a second sleep study. FYI, sleep studies are mega expensive. Like, 
just under 10 grand. Um, and my Medicare just told me my disability after waiting five years, four years, I think it's four years, just told me, oh, well, um, we're cutting you off because you owe us $9,000. And also your Medicare is going to be cut off. Well, I can't, I can't do that. My surgery I'm going to have on my thyroid is going to be mega expensive. So my attorney's trying to figure that out. And he's amazing too, but... Okay, back to the thyroid. So I come over here, and he immediately starts doing blood work. Sends me for um, an ultrasound. Oh, the blood work first to check my levels, my hormone levels. Um, then he sends me for... Um, ultrasound. In the meanwhile, he sends me to the guy that will be an ear, nose, and throat specialist that will do the surgery. And then they send me for a two-day uptake test. Um, you take like this radioactive medicine or something, a pill, the first day. Then you come back in four hours and they check you. They take pictures. Then you come back the very next morning, and they take pictures again. Sorry, just looking around. I don't want to get so preoccupied. I don't see stupid snakes bugging me, trying to be my friend. Okay, so I do that. Um, they send me to the hospital, which totally different experience on having my fine needle biopsy. It was way more professional the uh, radiologist maybe anyway the lady that looks at the samples was actually present during um, the doctor uh, pulling out the fluids from my nodules she was actually present very very sweet so was the doctor so were the nurses, um, and she let him know, yes, you know, that's, that's enough fluid to be tested, or no, that's not enough fluid. Anyway, results came back, um, papillary carcinoma on the right side for sure, possible on the left side. Okay, then the next step was I had a CAT scan with dye which determined, yes, you definitely have cancer on the right side, and you have more than likely you have cancer on the left side. But we're going to, for now, I think they're going to concentrate on the right side. Um, and then possible uh, radiation pills they mentioned afterwards. The surgery is three to five hours long. It's pretty intense. You go home the same day, though. Um, he's going to try to make an incision in my neck where the scar won't show up real bad. I'm not really worried about it, to be honest with you. The scar is the least of my worries. I'm not even worried about the cancer. I'm not worried about the surgery. I do want to stress, always get a second opinion when it comes to stuff like this, when it's serious. Doctors are human, radiologists, all, all the people in the medical field, they're human and they can overlook things. Get a second opinion and feel what your body's telling you. Your body can tell you a lot. I've known something wasn't right for like what I said, for a year or two. There aren't any huge symptoms. I, I have had a few little symptoms, but I don't even know if they're related to my cancer. Coughing, um, issues swallowing, voice changes, that most definitely is probably um, connected. But I, it's hard to explain how I knew, but I knew. And maybe because of my PTSD, maybe the medications I'm on for it. Maybe um, because I struggle with depression and suicidal thoughts. Maybe everything involved. Maybe my age. I don't know. But I'm not scared. I haven't been scared with 
any of my surgeries. Um, I just want to get it done. Basically, it's just, let's get it done, let's get it over with, let's deal with it. You know, people say, well, aren't you afraid, you know, there's a chance of you dying during surgery. Well, if I die, I die. You know, it's like, I, I don't, I don't know if the medication's doing it or if I've learned how to do it, but I'm kind of numb about it. It's like, if something happens, it happens. Now, the papillary carcinoma, everyone says, and you can look it up, that it's the most common thyroid cancer, and it's also the most curable. Um, it, if it's not caught in time, it can go into your nodules and um, tissue surrounding the area, and it can spread over time. It can go into your lungs and other places. So you want to be checked. If get your get your um, hormone levels checked through blood work once a year. Everybody, male and female. This is not just a female condition. It can happen to men. It can happen to women. Um, get your blood work done. A complete blood work. Everything, once a year. What's it going to hurt? It's a freaking needle poke. It's no big deal. I've had so many. I'm like, whatever. I do not like IVs. Those are pretty painful, but still, it's like, whatever. Once it's in, it's in. It's done. Um, so anyway, get checked once a year. Absolutely complete blood work. Get your urine drawn. Get your pap smear if you're male or female. Get your chest checked. Um, you start getting older, get a colonoscopy. I mean, doctors are not miracle workers. They're human, but they're there to help, to help us, you know. And for me, it's more of kind of an interesting journey going through all this. It's like I could just let it play out and let it take over, but I'm kind of enjoying the different steps, the different journeys, and experiencing it all. It's interesting to me. It's interesting how our bodies work. So, uh, uh, anyway, I'm scheduled for a post-op this month on the 15th, and then surgery September 3rd. Like I said, it's three to five hour surgery. They lay open your throat. They determine at that time. He did say that your nose and throat, <coughs> excuse me, specialist did tell me that it's stage between one and three. They'll know more once they open me up but um, and do testing on it. And at that time, they can also see, you know, a little bit better has it actually spread? Is it on the left side too? Do we, how much do we need to take? At this point I think he's just going to concentrate on my right side. He really doesn't want to remove my whole thyroid unless he absolutely has to. So like I said, all these doctors have been more than amazing. It's been an interesting journey to say the least. And I'm just kind of experiencing it and going through it. One thing I have found out when you tell people you have cancer. A lot of people in my life, and I'm not going to name names. Um, I will just say everybody reacts different when you tell them. Some people act like it's just another day. You, you just told them that you checked the mail, basically. That's how they respond. Oh, okay. Um, they don't treat you any different. Maybe they even stop talking to you. Stop acknowledging you. They don't ask how you're doing, how you're feeling, what are you thinking. It's kind of weird. This journey is really weird. It's, it's really lonely, too. Um... When you first tell people, some the other bunch of people are, are like, 
oh my god, you know, I love you, I'll pray for you. And poof, they're gone. You're alone. You're alone in your thoughts. You're alone in the journey. I don't have anybody that's really like... I have one person, my cousin, that checks up on me all the time. But other than that, I, other than that, I don't have anybody that's even really seems concerned. You know, oh, you have cancer. Oh, it's pretty much curable. It's slow growing. Um, it's not mis metastasizing. Yada yada. No big deal. Life goes on kind of an attitude towards me and it's it's strange to me you know because if anybody I love I would probably be over overbearing to them like what can I do for you how are you feeling um, let me go to the doctor's appointments with you tell me everything the doctors are saying but that's me and we can't expect obviously everybody to react the way we would react but in the beginning everybody was like oh god you know you have cancer and then everybody disappears I, I think they don't know what to say they don't know what to think maybe they don't want to think about it maybe they don't want to talk about it everybody deals with things differently and um, I think I base everything on myself how I would react how I would treat somebody and I tend to get let down very quickly and very easily when people don't act the same way because that's what I'm basing it on is how I would act how my mom would have act, acted it's a journey um, the long and the short of it is you're on the journey alone. It's you and your body in the hands of the doctors, in the hands of big guy, and the ultimate, um, sorry I keep putting my hand in the way, but the mosquitoes are getting my hand, they get my arm, they get my legs, sons of bitches. Ultimately, you come into this world and you go out alone, and the journey in the middle Sometimes you're alone, sometimes you have somebody, but ultimately aren't you always alone? I mean, that person is there, but they cannot be there at any given time. So you're basically solo. You can be solo with, with, um, I had something perfect to say. A solo with a bonus is how you can call it. Um solo with a bonus is having somebody sharing everything and going through life with you but ultimately you're, it's solo I mean when you die you go out by yourself you don't take anybody with you necessarily unless no you don't do you no so I don't know I've been rambling a lot um, if you have any questions for this journey I'm going through um, if you want to share your journey with cancer or PTSD, depression, suicidal thoughts, life in general, repotting unique plants, anything at all, go down below, leave a comment, hit the subscribe button if you want to know when I post videos. If you don't, that's fine too. If you wanted to subscribe to help me get to a thousand, to help me pay my bills, that would be great. But no, seriously, I, I totally appreciate everybody that's on my YouTube. I think you're fantastic. And over time, I will definitely have better video content from time to time. I will try to get better. I just finished up a full semester class in six weeks got an A woo my first thumbs up thumbs up thumbs up my first A in many 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 years how I got it 
I have no idea. It's all kind of a blur because I've been going through surgeries and doctors and testing. And I still managed to get an A. It's kind of weird. But anyway, so I'm out of school until fall, which starts the end of August, 26th of August. In between doctors, um, I start another book, I'm trying to write lyrics for a song, and hopefully I can start posting better content for you guys. I mean, who wants to watch boring shit, right? Alright, speaking of which, I'm going to finish this. Be well, everybody, and smile. Enjoy life. Get outside. Mama Fossil signing off, and I will see you soon. Bye.